hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about a lightweight sleeping bag. Here we go. Very, very small. And as such, it's not a one for extreme conditions. It's not exactly an Arctic sleeping bag. In fact, this is really just for the summer months. Like now, when it's one of the only times you see me in a t-shirt. Because I live in the northeast of England. And even in the summer, it's pretty cold up here. Is it too cold for this? Well, watch on, find out. I like Take are doing quite a lot of outdoor gear. Their main selling point is that they try and make everything really lightweight and also durable as well. There's no point having lightweight if it doesn't last five minutes. So you want something that's lightweight, reasonably well constructed and isn't going to let you down. Hopefully, that's what they've done with this. So it comes in a little compression sack, as most sleeping bags do. God damn, I'm getting eaten by ants and midges. That's the one thing about the summer up here. There's so many creepy crawlies. And that's it there, abracadabra. It's amazing that all of that fit into that tiny little bag. So basically, we've got a sleeping bag which is approximately six foot long by two foot wide, which is about 60 centimetres, so 180 long, about 60 centimetres wide, certainly big enough to get somebody of my stature in because I'm not a big fella. I'm only about 5 foot 9, possibly 5 foot 10 in my heels, um, so I easily fit in here. Got a velcro on there just to protect the zip, and the zip goes all the way down and along the bottom so it can be totally opened out or it can be joined to another sleeping bag so you can double up. I've actually tried this outdoors and as I say I live in the north of England. This is a little bit too lightweight for where I live unfortunately. I live a long way north and the temperature difference can actually be anywhere between 5 and 10 degrees lower than it is in southern England. And for something as light as this that's a bit of a problem. On a day like today this is perfect. Certainly on a night like tonight, it's not going to get below 12, 13 degrees. This is going to be ample. Outside the real heat of summer, it's just simply too cold. But I don't really see it as a sleeping bag. Check this out. So you'd be thinking that's a pretty stupid statement to make. It's a sleeping bag and yet he doesn't see it as a sleeping bag. Well, to be honest, I find this, when you're in it, it feels very claggy and uh, by claggy I mean it kind of sticks to your skin without being really warm um, feels very artificial which of course it is I was saying it feels a little bit claggy now claggy claggy is a northeastern word it's like when something clings to you say you've got a really hot sweaty day and your t-shirt's sticking to you that would be all claggy be a claggy sort of a day that's how it feels on your bare skin but elsewhere, so you've got a t-shirt on, or certainly if you had trousers on, that wouldn't be an issue. That's just something that I feel with most sleeping bags, with them being a synthetic fabric. Now, I'm the sort of fella that prefers to sleep just with his underpants and socks on. So I would go for a two to three season sleeping bag in the summer. For if you're prepared to leave a few clothes on, this is certainly going to be warm enough for most climates. Certainly up to and including the northeast of England. If you've got a hammock, sling this under your hammock, it's an extra insulating layer. Or you can have it over the top of a sleeping bag as a kind of traditional lightweight duvet. Or, if you're going out for a picnic, you can simply spread this out, waterproof side down, and you can easily get a family of four on here with all your picnic gear. You keep yourselves out of the wet grass and away from all the creepy crawlies and really that's where I see the usefulness of this it's a really useful picnic mat under blanket or over blanket and possibly emergency sleeping bag now I'd imagine in the south of England where it's a lot warmer and the weather conditions are a lot better or certainly in other countries where it doesn't get as cold as it does in the north of England this would be a cracking summer sleeping bag absolutely great now this is rated at a comfort level of 9 degrees Celsius, which as I say in the northeast of England, uh, even in the summer it rarely creeps above that on a night. But on hot nights, great. This would be no problem at all. 
Certainly for kids, sleepovers at room temperature, by all means, send your child away with one of these and they're going to be warm enough. But for outdoor use, north of England and above, uh, it's a little bit too light. However, it's very well made. It's certainly warm enough for warmer climates and it's fully machine washable as well at 30 degrees. So if you've got it laid out on the ground like this and it gets mucky, simply chuck it in the washing machine at 30 degrees, pull it out, hang it on your washing line. It's not going to pull the washing line down because it's so lightweight and it's going to dry out in no time. I don't know how much more to say about this. It's certainly nice and lightweight. It insulates you from the ground. It's waterproof. So you could actually string it up and use it as a tarp if necessary. Uh, not that I would do that. It'd be a shame to, to waste it as a tarp, but it could be done. Under blanket, over blanket, warm weather, sleeping bag. Now I've said this before and I'll no doubt say it again, but years ago something like this would have cost a fortune. Now the ten a penny, very, very affordable. And there's no reason why you couldn't have something like this, just in case of an emergency, you know, put it in your car. So your car breaks down in the winter, you wrap yourself up in it as a blanket. Very, very good, useful, and certainly could possibly save somebody's life in one of those emergency situations. Certainly insulates you from the wind, and it retains the heat that you've got in here as well. You sit around a campfire, as long as you don't get too close, the sparks on here will melt it, as long as you don't get too close to that campfire. You're going to be lovely and warm, but don't rely on something like this in cold weather. It's not a cold weather sleeping bag. Now if, like me, you've got a log burning stove and some nights you can't be bothered to put it on, you're lying on the settee with the wife watching the TV, you might just reach for this fella, zip, unzip it, chuck it over the pair of you and just retain that little bit extra heat. Now before I finish this video, I'll just compress this as far as I can. We'll see just how small it'll go. I'm going to be careful not to knack at any of the fittings here, although they do seem pretty well stitched on. That's about as compact as it'll go. That's very small. I wouldn't compress it that far, unless you absolutely had to. I mean, that's probably the size of a little, little cook set, you know, it's really tiny. Even that is pretty small. And it's exceptionally light as well, so that's going to add next to no weight to your pack. Now being waterproof is certainly a bonus. Because if you just made an emergency shelter, the ground underneath it might not be dry. You know, you might have just ripped up a load of ferns or, you know, dry-ish sphagnum moss or something to put down as your bedding. I suppose if you were lying in this, that wetness wouldn't get through to your skin, so it wouldn't chill you more. So really that's a bit of a bonus. I thought I would just throw those extra uses that I found for it in there, just so you would consider it more than just a sleeping bag. The added waterproof nature of this really does make it suitable for the picnic and also, you know, to wrap yourself up in, possibly for emergency use as well. So that's a real bonus. Definitely one to take a look at. I'll put the link to it in the video description. Check it out and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. There you go, second cast. Let him go, and on to the next one.